this morning. How many know they say sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost? I didn't come to play today. I come to do the will of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I come to bless him today. I come to honor him today. I come to give him glory today because of who he is. He is the king of kings. He is our Lord God mighty in battle. He is the great I am this morning. He is the one that walks with us and talks with us. He's the one, oh, glory to God, that causes us to have life and have it more abundantly. Can I get a witness in the house on today? Oh, I didn't come to play. I didn't come to play. I didn't come to play today. I didn't come to play today. I didn't come to play today. I come to do the will of my father today. So we give him honor, glory, and praise today. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He's a good God. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. He's everywhere at the same time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And nothing is too hard for him today. If he said something, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he said that he's going to do something, that settles it. He's going to do it. There ain't no question about it. God is going to do just what he said. Oh, hallelujah. Before we go any further into our service, I would like to recognize our visitors. If we have any visitors today, we would like to extend this time to you to stand and give your name and your church affiliation if you would like to at this time. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. We honor the Lord today for all those that are here in the house of the Lord on today. Amen, 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 and amen. Glory to God. And before I move along any further, I would also like to extend our condolences to um, the Sister Gladys Juanita Todd. The celebration of life will be today at 1 p.m. at Zebulon First Baptist Church in Zebulon, North Carolina. So we extend our condolences to the family, and we are praying, glory to God, hallelujah, for that family. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. How many is excited about the Lord and about what he, come on somebody, glory to God. We serve a mighty God. He is in full control of everything that's out of control. Come on, somebody. It might look like a train wreck. It might look like it's just all over the place. It might look like it just so ain't going to work out. But I stopped by today to let you know, glory to God, hallelujah, that it's going to work together according to his will, not your will, not my will, not the president's will, not your mama will, but it's all going to work together according to God's will and his plan. Amen. How many know that it's all about him? How many know that it's his show? How many know that he's the author and the finisher? How many know that if he started it, So why are we worried about anything? As we sitting up in the kingdom of God today, looking good, and you should be feeling pretty good. Amen. Glory to God. If you're not feeling too good, see me after church. All right. All right. All right. Amen. But we do give God honor, glory, and praise for the apostle of this house. Amen. Apostle Willard V. Dickens. Come on, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. We have to give honor where honor is due. Glory to God. We honor our mother, Mother Morris. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 And we honor the Lord for all the saints of God that are in the house on today. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. I just want you to forget about yourself and concentrate on him. I want you to forget about yourself, forget about everything that's going on around you, 
And I want you to concentrate on him. I want you to concentrate on Jesus. I want you to concentrate on the king of kings. I just, I, I, I just want you to go there for a minute. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because we come into the house of God a lot of times and we come because of what we want. Amen. But let's concentrate on what he wants this morning. Hallelujah. And what he wants is praise. What he wants is your worship. What he wants is for you to give him glory. Oh, hallelujah. Forget about yourself and concentrate on him, the lover of your soul, the great I am. The king of glory, the Lord who's mighty in battle. Just concentrate on him, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Just concentrate on him, the, 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 the king of glory. Ah, Shonda, glory to God. All mine. In all directions is on the king of glory. He's seated at the right hand of the father this morning. And he's making intercession for you and I. He's sitting there and he's making intercession. For you and I. Ah, my, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah forget about yourself. And concentrate on him. My God. I want you to see him this morning. Seated at the right hand of the Father. Ah, yes, God. Hey. <laughs> now I want you to see those that are king's subjects. I want you to see yourself seated on the other side of him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's your seat. Take your seat. Take your seat. Right there, right there. Yeah, the robot shot. Right there, right there. That's your seat. Yeah, yeah. That's your seat. The Father's on the throne, <laughs> and the Son <laughs> is seated at his right hand, and he's making intercession for you and I, and we're seated on the other side. And as the accuser of the brethren goes to and fro, seeking whom he may devour, and he's coming and he's making accusations against you. <laughs> Jesus is sitting there making intercession. And he's saying, yeah, that may be true. That may be so. Yeah, 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 they did all of that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh-huh. That's right. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. 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 But then he's, he's saying all of that that he said, the accuser said, he said, yeah, but, you know, I paid for all of that. Everything that he said, I've already taken care of all of that. And then he said, Father, remember my hands and my feet and my side. I still have that body. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Everything that they did. Yeah, the holes in my hands and the holes in my feet and in my side. Yes, these are signs. Yeah, yeah of what I did for them, my 
children. Yes, Lord. You are the judge, Father. You judge correctly. And I'm the advocate. I'm the one that pleads their case. Good God from Zion. <laughs> I'm pleading their case right now. And I'm telling you, as I raise my hand, and as I've made this statement, that it is finished. And the father, the judge, is saying, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. What you did on that cross was enough to satisfy, to justify, to sanctify, to do everything that needed to be done so that we could have a right to the tree of life so that we could have a right a way back to the Father. Romans 8 said, Now there is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. And because they are in Christ, and when I look at him, and when I hear from him, I don't see them, I see him. I don't see any of that that the accuser is saying. Yeah, all of those things happened. Yeah, they did all of that. <laughs> but you have done all of this. So, Satan... Satan, Slewfoot, Lucifer, the old devil, you are bound. You are under their feet. You have no more authority over them. I put you under their feet. So now they are seated in heavenly places. And whatsoever they ask in my name, I'm going to do it. And they are above all principalities and all powers and nothing can hurt them. So, in my name, the name of Jesus, at that name, when they say that name, Jesus, demons tremble. And at that name, No one can be saved unless they come by the way of the cross, not unless they come by that name. All power, all authority has been given to the Son who's seated at the right hand of the Father. And because we are in him, and he's in us, the same power, the same kingdom authority is in them. So as we come today, Father, as we come to the throne of grace today, we come by the shed blood of the Lamb. Jesus the Christ and we come today with thanksgiving in our hearts 
and thanksgiving on our lips. And we enter in today with thanksgiving. We thank you, Father, for what your son has done. We thank you on today, Lord, that we have a right to the tree of life. And so today, Father, we enter in your gates with thanksgiving. And we are not just coming in the gates. We're coming into the courts with praise. And we're not stopping there at the courts with praise. Good God from Zion. I, your desire today is to be in the holy of holies. Hey. Our desire today is to be where you are. Our to desire today is not to sit in these seats of flesh today. Our desire is to be in the spirit. Our desire is to be where you are. Good God. So as we're forgetting about ourselves and we're concentrating on you to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we thank you on today, Father. Hallelujah. For the right relationship that we have with you. We thank you on today, Lord, that we are not judging one another, that we are not looking at everyone else's faults, but we are looking unto you, the author. Ha, and the finisher of our faith. We are looking unto you today, Father. Forgetting about everything else. Forgetting about everything else. And we're concentrating on you. Yes, Lord. My God. Yes, Lord. We want to see you in all of your glory. We're forgetting about ourselves. And we're concentrating on you. Not what my flesh wants. Not what my flesh desires. But I'm desiring what you desire. And I'm here for you. I'm here to worship you. In spirit. My God. My God. My God. And with that said, you're free. You have free course in this place. Move like you want to move. Say what you want to say. Whatever your people need, you said you supply. So today, Father, Move by your spirit in this place on today. Have thine own way. In Jesus' name. As we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. you'll take your Bible and go to Psalms 88. Psalms 88. Psalms 88. My God. Psalms 88. Oh 
that I started at the first place and I'm going to read it in its entirety. And it reads, O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thy ear unto my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength, free among the dead like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more. And they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness, in the deep. Thy wrath led hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy ways, Salah. Thou hast put away my acquaintance far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up, and I cannot come forth. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Wilt thou shew wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Salah. Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave? Or thy faithfulness and destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark and the righteous in the land of forgetfulness? But until thee have I cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Lord, why canst thou, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou? thy face from me. I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer from thy terrors, I am distracted. The fierce wrath goeth over me. The terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed me about together. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me and my acquaintance into darkness. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, don't live in despair. God still cares. neighbor and said neighbor oh neighbor don't live in despair God still cares how many really believe that so as we are fine glory to God in the writer of this song the writer is overwhelmed with despair. He's overwhelmed with fear and feelings of rejection. And as a matter of fact, he is close to death. And it sounds like that he's had this going on for a long time because it says something about his youth. And then it says, he does not state the cause of his trouble. We don't know what his troubles are. We like to speculate when we see people going through or when things are going on with people. We like to speculate about what's going on, but we really don't know. So this writer, he does not state the cause of his trouble. It could be illness. It could be enemies. Or it could be both. 
Now where in this song does he express hope? In the last verse, he states, the darkness is my closest friend. Does anybody feel like that? Or has anybody ever felt like that? So I want to ask you a question, though. Is this a song of faith? Or is it a song of unbelief? It is a profound song of faith. And it's realistic faith. It ain't this uh, faith, fake, false faith. It's a realistic faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And in spite of his hopelessness, the psalmist still hopes in God who saves him. Where is your hope this morning? You can't put your hope in people, places, or things because they will fail you every time. Your hope and your trust must be in the God who saves. There are times in life when even people of deep spirituality, those people that seem to have it all together, there are times when they lose their faith. And as with the psalmist, they feel forsaken both by God and by man. Do I have anybody in this house feeling like that today? You feel like you've been forsaken by God and by man. You feel like you're out here all by yourself. You feel like you're out here on the, on the Isle of Loneliness. Good God from Zion. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There seems... Um, no possibility in life that God will rescue them from their troubles. It seems like God is so far away that he just cannot reach me. Glory to God. But I want to let you know today that God in, the, in his infinite wisdom may choose not to deliver you or he may choose to deliver you. Come on, somebody. And yet, the sufferer continues to cry to God for help. Glory to God. See, when you feel like that you just and is not hearing from God or God is not hearing your prayer, or God is not hearing your cry because you don't see any movement on your situation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you just throw up both hands and you say, you know what? The heck with all of it. Come on, somebody. I've been crying all night, and I've been crying all day, and I've been doing everything I know, God. Hallelujah, but I still don't see no movement. I've been paying my tithe. I've been going to church. I've been ushering, and I've been preaching, and I've been teaching. Good God Almighty. But then you find this brother and sister that come into the church. Uh, good God from Zion, and they've been doing everything under the sun, and they come into church, and I see them being promoted from Glory to glory, and here I am, God. Hallelujah, crying out to you day and night. Good God from Zion, and I'm not getting any movement. So you know what, God? Because it looks this way. Good God, you know what? I'm just going to throw my hands in. I'm just going to throw in the towel, and I'm just going to go head on and do my own thing. Because I'm looking in the natural. I'm looking at things from my point of view, and I've lost sight of you, God, and I've lost sight of how you operate. I've lost sight of how you do things. Hallelujah. But you know what, Lord? Then this is the other brother sitting on the other side that's doing the same thing that you're doing, or the other sister. They crying too, and y'all crying together. And this, this sister brother just done threw in the towel. But you made your mind up that I'm not going to throw in the towel. That I'm going to keep on seeking God. I'm going to keep on going after God. I'm going to keep on crying out to him. And the brother or the sister that does that, that's the brother or the sister that's showing some real faith. That's the brother, the sister that's saying, you know what? If God don't do it. He 
he's still God. And as a matter of fact, Job said in Job 13 and 15, come on somebody, <laughs> though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Come on, somebody, because, see, you got to get your mind on the real Jesus Christ. You got to get your faith on the real God. You got to get your faith in the one that says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Good God. You got to get your faith in that God. That one, that one, that one right there. Not that one over there Say, you know what? I'm going to give you everything that your flesh desires. Not that one. Because the Bible says there ain't no good things in this flesh. Because you know this flesh going to ask for, think about, and it's going to want to do all of this stuff. Good God. And if you don't put that flesh under subjection, hey, you're going to give it everything it wants. Good God. But when you begin to take authority over that flesh, and you begin to tell that flesh that you are not in control. That you don't belong to yourself. That you belong to an almighty God. The God that saved you. The God that delivered you. And the God that set you free. Paul says, uh, uh, I found out, glory to God, when I would do good, evil is what? Yeah, it's always present. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and when you want to do right, and when you want to do good, and when you want to obey, and when you want to be there, and when you want to do all of that, glory to God. Hallelujah. Then you feel that warfare. That, that warfare. And I'm like, what, 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 what is this? And then we forget about what we're wrestling against. Then we forget about what's really going on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can't forget about what's really going on because if you do, you're going to go with the wrong decision. You're going to make the wrong decision. And sometimes you got to sit your hips down and you got to say, so <laughs> don't worry. The flesh is not in control. You got to say, don't worry, just, just hold on, just hold on, just hold on. You're not in control here no way. You don't run anything here anyway. And you forgot whose house this really is. But see, you got to be over in the spirit to be able to do it. Because if you stay in that flesh and you try to do it according to that flesh, Good God, that flesh going to win every time. Because you're going to give in because of your feelings. And because of my emotion. And because I feel like this. And, yeah, that's true too. But I'm going to stay over here in the spirit. And I'm going to keep my peace. And I'm going to keep my joy. And I'm going to put you under subjection. Because you don't rule nothing. You don't run nothing, okay? All right. So we find the psalmist, glory to God. And he's saying, and yet while I suffer, I'm going to continue to cry to God for help. Now that's real faith. And when we counsel a sufferer, we often quote the happy and hopeful scripture passages. And then are disappointed when they seem to have no effect. You know how we'll do it. We'll try to put the word on it. We, we say all them scriptures. We counsel with all them scriptures. And it still don't seem like, well, pastor, you said it. And the word said this. And da-da-da-da-da, there we go. And sometimes it is better to read a psalm like this, glory to God, than to give somebody all these happy scriptures. Sometimes you need to get over here and, 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 and you need to read scriptures like this. And, and 
it will let us know that there are mysteries to suffering that we cannot explain. And in the end, the truth remains in God, there is ultimate hope. And he never forsake those who are his own. According to John 6, 36 through 40. And one of the hardest things for the psalmist in this psalm is to bear is that he knows God is ultimately the cause of his distress. Now, that's hard right there. That's hard right there. That's hard right there. When, when I know that the Lord is the one that has allowed this distress or he has put this distress on me. I'm going I'm to sit right there for a minute. How can a good God allow his people to suffer? You hear people say that all the time. And a lot of people won't serve God just for that purpose right there. How is he such a good God that he would allow people to suffer? Jesus suffered. The Bible says he suffered. And in his suffering, he learned obedience. Obedience as much as obedience to that cross. So suffering is necessary. It is going to produce something in your life. You may not understand it. You might not know what's going on. But I stopped by today to let you know that that suffering, that distress that you're going through, it is going to produce a fruit of work in your life. You may not understand it right now. And I know it don't feel good to your flesh. But Pastor Mary Dickens stopped by today to let you know that Romans 8 and 28 is going to testify, glory to God, up to what God is doing in your life. I know you can't see it right now, but that's all right. The Bible said the just shall live by faith. See, we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. We don't walk by what we can see. We don't walk by what's going on with us because we know that whatever we're in right now, and whatever we're going through, glory to God, hallelujah, God is going to get the glory out of this. I know it looked bad. I know it even feel bad to your flesh. And I know you question God, why did I have to go through it? Why am I going through it? Why did my mom and daddy had to do that to me? Why did this happen? Why did that? I know you're asking God all kinds of questions. You can ask him. He's big enough. He can handle it. You can ask him anything you want to ask him. But one thing you cannot do is question who he is. He is God. And besides them, there's not another. He can do anything but fail. Come on, somebody. Good God. Hallelujah. Don't you know if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we wouldn't be sitting here today looking like we're looking today and having accomplished all the things that we've accomplished today. If it had not been uh, for the Lord having a plan uh, for your life uh, and my life. Uh, and matter of fact, I believe we said last Sunday that he has a kingdom agenda, uh, meaning uh, glory to God. Uh, God has a plan uh, for what he's going to do. Uh, don't you get discouraged uh, and don't you get dismayed. Uh, don't you look uh, to another God uh, because the other gods, uh, they are dead. Uh, but the God uh, that we serve, uh, he rose uh, on the third day. Uh, come on, somebody. Y'all act like he did, though. 
Y'all act like he's still in the grave. Y'all walking around like he's still under. Y'all walking around like y'all worshiping Buddha. Y'all walking around like y'all worshiping Allah. But I stopped by today to let you know that the God we serve, his name is the name that's above every name. And when you begin to call on the name of Jesus, Demons tremble. When you begin to call on the name of Jesus, things begin to happen. You can't see it, but you got to know that you know that the God that you serve got all power. And he's moving according to to his plan and you ought to thank God and you ought to praise God that he's allowed you and me to be a part of his plan glory to God oh we bless him today we bless him we bless him we bless him we honor him today We play too much. See, you can't play with the devil. <clears throat> you play with him. He liable to take your life. Good God. Hallelujah. But when we counsel <coughs> a sufferer, we often want to tell him some good things. But sometimes, sometimes we need to tell him. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And I bind every spirit and every wicked force that will try to come against this word. And that will try to come against me. That's how I know it's effective. Satan, we bind you right now in the name of Jesus. We bind every wicked force that's trying to come against the word today in the name of Jesus. We bind you, Satan, and you are bound. And we send you back to the dry places. Every spirit that's not of God's spirit, every tormenting spirit, every spirit that's come to distract, every spirit that's come to confuse, I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. And I cancel every assignment. And I send it back to the dry places. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Matter of fact, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Why? Because I'm more than a conqueror. And I apply the blood of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I thank you for the victory. 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 I call for victory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the victory. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, y'all might be scared of the devil. I ain't scared of no devil. Because I understand he's under my feet. And I understand no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But I thank God, hallelujah, for the weapon that's being formed. The Bible said we got to give thanks in all things. Good God, when he come against you, and when he's throwing his mess at you, you got to tell God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the weapon. Good God. Glory. I know the devil don't like me. I don't like him either. And as a matter of fact, open the back door. Open up the back door. And I'm serving notice in the name of Jesus for every wicked, every spirit that's in here that's not of gold. You got to go right now. I command you by the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost to get out of God's house. 
leave spirits leave 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 in Jesus name and don't come back to this house or no other house you leave and go to the dry places in Jesus name don't even come up in here with that foolishness The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, pulling down of wrong mindsets, pulling down of you not knowing who you are, pulling down of those wrong thoughts, pulling down all those things that are not of God. Okay? All right. All right. All right. Okay. No, we don't do that in here. We don't do that in here. We don't do that, and I'm talking about in the spirit, okay? Because when you come against me, you come against God. You can't come in here and come against the pastor. And every spirit that did just what you just did, you've been cast out to the dry places. I don't play. I don't play with the devil. When I stood up and said that, I meant what I said. I don't play with the devil. Okay, so if you came here to play, you might want to leave because we don't play in here. We give God glory, we give God honor, and we give God praise. Okay, all right, because God is a good God. He's been too good for us to keep playing in his house. Now we got to come with the right motives. We got to come with the right mindsets. We got to come him to worship him. We can't come in here to watch witchcraft in the house of God. You can't come in the house of God, hallelujah, and try to look for something that's not here. You come for him. We come for him. We come to hear from him. We come to see him. We come to experience him. We come to invite him in because when we come to invite him in, then he comes in and he does whatever the work that needs to be done. It's in him that we live and we move and we have our being. It's in him. He been telling us for the last how many Sundays? Choose ye this day who you gonna serve. He keep coming back to us with that because we keep saying one thing and we keep doing something else. You can't keep playing church. Because we done left the church age. We're over in the kingdom now. we operating in kingdom authority now. We're taking authority over everything that's not of God. Because it's time for his kingdom to come to earth. It's time for things to be done in the earth like he do in the heavens. It's time for all sickness to get out of here. It's time for all hate and bitterness. It's time for all that to go. That's not in the kingdom of God. That's in the kingdom of the devil. If you're operating in hatred and bitterness and envy and strife and all of that, that's not of God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He give us each and every day for his kingdom purposes, for the kingdom to come to earth. And the kingdom can't come to earth because we won't make a choice of who he's going to serve. Well, you've already made a choice. Because when you didn't choose him, you're still sitting in the kingdom of darkness. And this is why you can't get nothing from him. Because you're trying to serve two gods. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't serve him for what you want. Because you don't know what you want. He knows what you need. And he promised that he supplied 
all of your needs uh, according to his riches uh, in glory uh, by Christ Jesus. Uh, glory to God. Uh, he didn't come uh, for you to serve your flesh. Uh, he came uh, that you may have life uh, and have it to the fullest. Uh, he came uh, for you uh, to destroy uh, the works of your flesh. Uh, glory to God. Uh, he said no flesh uh, will glory uh, in my presence. Good God Almighty. We can't keep doing things uh, like we used to do. We're going to do them according to his will and his purpose. Or they ain't going to get done at all. It's not what you want. You don't know what you want. You weren't created for yourself. You were created for the master's use. Good God from Zion. And we find the psalmist, uh, he realized uh, that he wasn't created for himself. Uh, Job realized uh, that he wasn't created for himself. Uh, when Job lost everything, uh, it didn't matter to Job. Uh, Job's thing uh, was uh, that I'm pleasing him. Uh, am I pleasing him? Uh, I'm not trying to please her uh, or her uh, or him. Uh, my job is to please the master. No matter what I've been through, no matter what I'm going through right now, if he don't give me another thing, I'm satisfied with my position in him today. You can't con God. You can't fool him. He ain't no fool. He is God. Omnipotent. Omnipresent. And omniscient. I'm everywhere at the same time. Uh, Say it the spirit of the living God. I got all power in my hand. Uh, I got what you need. Uh, but you must uh, come unto me. All uh, oh, uh, that are laying uh, and heavy laying. Uh, and I'll give you rest. You ain't going to get no rest in this world. Living in the state that you're living. But when you come on to me, saith the Lord, I'll give you the rest that you so desire. Come on and give him praise. Come on and give him glory. Come on and give him honor today. Oh, hallelujah. He's got all power, and he wants to meet every need. Glory to God. But he's saying, it must be done my way, saith the spirit of the living God. You are not in control of your own life. God is in control, and you got to do it like he says do it. Most of our suffering, we're suffering because of what we've done, our decisions that we've made. And God, with his good self, is still making corrections, making corrections, making it right. We can't blame anybody. We can't blame anybody. We can't lay the charge to nobody. We can't charge anybody with anything. The Bible says, oh, no man, nothing but to love him. We want to say people owe us something. Mama and them didn't do this. And they didn't do this and all this foolishness. But God said, I gave you life. He said, I gave you life. I gave you life. He said, I gave it to you. He said, I came that you may have life more abundantly. But you can't have the abundant life until you do it like he say do it. Just like he say do it. That's it. And you can do it because the way have been prepared for you to do it. 
All you got to do is follow therein and obey. That's the only way. That's the only way. Jesus is the way. There's no other way. Don't let folk fool you that there's other ways. There's other paths to God. There's not other paths to God. Jesus is the way. Okay? And the good thing about him is the love that he has for us. Is the love. 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 That same love that he has, has for us. We are supposed to show this same love to each other. To each other. Every day. All day. Not sometimes. When you're operating in real love, the real love of God, it ain't on the day and all tomorrow. It ain't on when they do me good, but when they do me wrong, it's off. That is not real love. That is not unconditional love. Unconditional love and the real love of God loves you no matter what you do. It's not conditional. It's not if you come to church and pay your tithe, and if you do this, and if you do this, God is going to love me. God loved us while we were yet still sinners. And he died for us while we were still in our sin and in our mess. And we still saying, well, you know, if they do this, I'm going to do it. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. If you say you love me, no matter what we go through, no matter what comes our way, guess what? Because we are more than conquerors, man of God, we can get through it. You can get through it. I don't care what you go through. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what the devil has thrown at you. I don't care what you had and you didn't have. You sitting here today in the sight of God. And God is saying that if you fully commit to me and my ways, I'll make you rulers. Rulers. You won't have to work hard. You won't have to jump through all these hoops that man is telling you you got to jump through. God has a way to get you to where you need to get to and through everything. Without you thinking you got to go this way or that way, do it like, no, 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 that's man's way. But God's got a way. Come on and give him glory. I'm about done. And I try to stay with my cute little stuff. Because I like to try to be cute. But the Lord won't let me be cute. And that's all right. Because it don't matter. None of this matters anyway. What matters is what's going on in the inside. Hallelujah. My inside. The inner man is happy. Why? Because God is saying what he wants to say. And God is getting the glory. It ain't got nothing to do with Mary. What it's got to do is with him. It's all about him. It's all about him and his kingdom. And if you can get out of yourself, stop thinking it's about you. It's not about you. It's about God and his glory. And we got to die to this flesh. We got to put it under subjection. Every time it rises up, you put it down. Every time I want to stand up and say something ugly, you put it down. It's your cross. You got something to do. Stop letting your flesh run wild and crazy and say in and everything. Treat people any kind of way. The devil is a liar. y'all. Put it down. When it rises up, put it down. Lay it down. Lay it down. If you got anger and bitterness, lay it down. Lay it down. Lay it down. Because that's what the Bible say. Lay down every. That's it. Ain't that what it said? And it said lay it down. Let try to. Oh, anger. I'm laying you down. Deceitfulness. I'm laying you down. Manipulation. I'm laying you down. 
not today. Lay it down. Try laying it down. Whatever come up, lay it down. Hate, bitterness, anger, lay it down. Lay it down and let the love of Christ that's in you, man of God. Let the love of God. You got the love of God in you. And don't let nobody tell you you don't. The love of God is in this vessel. You're not what they're saying and who they're saying. You're what God is saying. And God is going to perfect that that's concerning you. He's going to perfect that. And we're going to see you preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We said that there are mysteries to suffering that we cannot explain. So in the end, the truth remains. In God, there is ultimate hope. And he never forsakes those whom, who are his own. One of the hardest things for the psalmist to bear in that he knows God is ultimately the cause of his distress. When he says, you have put me in the lowest pit. However, the psalmist does not know why God has rejected him. Once he dies, the psalmist believes he will be beyond God's reach. The dead never sees God's wonders. His saving works. His love and faithfulness are not known in the grave or in destruction. The psalmist continues his lament. It's not death alone that is so terrible. It is death under God's wrath that the psalmist dreads. God's terrors have engulfed him. To him, darkness seems like the only friend in his life, except for one other who would hold on to the psalmist even when the psalmist can no longer hold on to him. You get to that place. I can no longer hold on, God. It's just gotten too hard. I made a whole lot of wrong decisions and choices. And I just I just can't do it. I want to, but I can't, Lord. So I'm just going to walk this way. I'm just going to go this way because this is the way I know. But God knows the way you take also. And he said, even though you walk that way, I'm not going to walk away from you. He said, I'm going to be right there through your good times your struggles, your heartaches. He said, I'm going to be right there. He said, even when you didn't think I was there. He said, I was there all the time. He said, yeah, I know you asked, well, why did you let that happen to me, God? He said, it happened, but I was right there. He said, because it happened, I'm going to take that that happened to you, and I'm going to take it, and I'm going to use it for my glory. He said, I take you through trials and tribulations so I can bring you out for somebody else's glory. He said, I take you through it and bring you out of it. He said, I know when I'm taking you in it. He said, I already know I'm going to bring you out of it. He said, when I bring you out of it, I bring you out for my glory. And I bring you out to be a witness. I bring you out to be a testimony to the world of who I am and what I can do. So as you're going through, 
don't question it. He said, thank me for it. He said, but I got a plan. He said, I'm going to use it for my glory. Because somebody's going to come to that same bridge. They're going to come to that same crossroad. And they're going to need to know which way to go. He said, I'm going to use you as the witness to point them in the right direction. So in the midst of the trial, in the midst of the suffering, in the midst of the going throughs, know that God is with you. Come on and give him a hand clap of praise. He said, because my promises are yea and amen. He said, I promised you I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, even though you went your own way, he said, I didn't go nowhere. I was right there all the time waiting for you to turn back to me. And he said, the day you hear my voice, harder not your heart. The day that you hear me speaking to you, harder not your heart. In other words, open your heart to me. He said, because I want to come in. I want to come in and I want to soak with you. I want to come in and have a relationship with you. I want to come in and I want us to commune together. I want to come in because I want us to have a real relationship. He said, because if you get the relationship with me, all your other relationships will be good. He said, but you got to get me first. He said, you got to get me first. It's because when you get me on the inside, hallelujah, all them other relationships will be easy. He said, then I could give you everything. Good God. Ah, shut up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know why they'll be easy? He said, because I'll be on board. And I'll show you how to love them unconditionally. I'll show you how to, when they treat you all kinds of ways, I'll show you how to still love them in spite. Hallelujah. I'll give you a word to give them. When they're trying to give you a crazy word, God said, I'll give you a word of love to give them that will change their life. Because all it takes is one word from God. One word from God will change your whole life. I said one word from God will change your whole life. Ask me how I know. I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness. I stand here today as a living witness. One word from God. And it ain't got to be no whole sentence. One word from God will cause your whole life to turn around. So today as we come to a close of this service, but never to a close of your relationship with him, Never to a close of the glory of God that you can access anytime, anywhere, any day. He's a friend to stick closer. He's a brother. He's whatever you need him to be. But you got to try him for yourself. Don't go off what I say. Try for yourself. Amen. Come on, somebody. And see, the devil will try to put you to sleep because he don't want you to hear this word. Go on, somebody. Go on somewhere, devil. But as we come to a close, maybe you left him. Maybe you left him. But he didn't leave you. He said, come. I'm calling you back to me. Come on home. My son, come on home, my daughter. He said, so we can have a serious party for your homecoming. Come on, somebody. So, if you left him and you'd have been a backslidden state and you're doing your own thing and you heard the word of the Lord today and the Lord is calling you home,